Welcome to this reflection on behalf of Kidderminster Izmir Team Ministry. Thank you for listening in and I hope you will find it a time of blessing and encouragement. Have you ever thought when you read the Bible about where the writers get their inspiration? I frequently do with the psalmist because he talks about things like still waters and green pastures and birds and all the things like that. But the one that really grabs my attention is the little passage in Psalm 8. And let me read it to you. It's Psalm 8 verses 3 and 4. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars and what you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? The son of man that you care for him. Baffling, isn't it? I wonder where David was when he thought about that. Was he flat on his back in a field looking up? There wouldn't have been any light pollution. Was he on his porch in a rocking chair? Was he on a balcony in his palace? But it really struck David that this mighty God who created this wonderful universe cared for him and he cares for us. He loves us. This great God loves each and every one of us. And he wants a relationship with us. Relationships are two way things. He loves us and we need to have a relationship to love him back. The problem is we live in an imperfect world, don't we? And that relationship can be get broken or stale and we can lose all those thrills and enthusiasm and the wonderful, you know, the enthusiasm about coming to meet fellow Christians and, and to come to church and meet up, the enthusiasm of getting into God's presence and meeting with him and it can go. Things become mundane. I want to read you something. And again, it is from Revelation. And it's chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. And here it is to the church in Ephesus. The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven golden lampstands, says this. I know your deeds and your toil and perseverance and that you cannot endure evil men and you put to the test those who call themselves apostles and they are not and you found them to be false and you have perseverance and have endured for my name's sake and have not grown weary but I have this against you you have left your first love John Stott who was my rector when I was a student at and at All Souls, Langham Place, writes this about the Ephesians. Their first flush of ecstasy had passed. Their early devotion to Christ had cooled. They had once been in love with him, but they had fallen out of love. And it's happening today, isn't it, when we think about it? It's so easy for things, the church bureaucracy and the religiosity, and it's sometimes it's so dusty, it smells like a musty hymn booked. And it can get in the way of our relationship with God and our true mission. In our private lives, we can find the mundane things of life get in the way of our relationship with God. Because we are, as I've already said, in an imperfect world. But you know, if we are adrift from God, we can get back and we can look for ways to become close to him again and to get back that old love, that ecstasy, that enthusiasm, that exuberance. I say that intimacy is de defined as a close relationship, an intimate relationship. But in this day and age, it isn't easy. I want to quote again from another writer and it's a writer, Richard Foster, and he says this, superficiality is the curse of our age. The doctrine of instant gratification is the primary spiritual problem. There is a desperate need today, not for intelligent people or gifted people, but a deep people, people who are rooted. 
And part of the problem why we lose people from churches is they are not deeply rooted, so that when trials and tribulations come across, it's a bit like the parable of the sower. A real deep relationship needs years of work, as those of us that have been married for the many years know only too well. And I believe that it's the superficiality where there is just literally a gloss over the top of a so-called relationship causes many problems both in the natural world and the spiritual world. I believe that's why we see so many cases of marriage breakdown and relationship breakdown trying to compete with what they see as what should be or what they see on social media and yet that's not what life is really like. And so really and truthfully, if we want to get a relationship where we are so deeply in love with God that nothing can shake us, it takes discipline. And in this time of Lent, perhaps this is the time to look at it. Paul says to Timothy, and I'm reading now from 1 Timothy 4, verse 7 to 8, Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness, for bodily discipline is only of little profit. But godliness is profitable for all things, since it holds the promise for the present life and the life to come. Going to the gym is fine, but it won't buy us a place in eternity. And here Paul is saying to Timothy, work at being godly, work at your relationship with God and with Christ. Um, somebody else, and I've just jotted this down, Eugenie Peterson says this, exercise daily in God, no spiritual flabbiness please. I like that. So we need a disciplined life for today and for always. It means making a priority and sticking to it, not being casual. In this time of Lent, there are perhaps, and I'll put these to you, things that I've thought about. There are four things that we could perhaps look at so that we can stick to a regime in the way that we spend time with God. The first one is simplicity making our lives more simple clearing out the rubbish both physically and I'm a fine one to talk believe you me mentally and spiritually putting aside those things that are not really important and not necessary to make time for God another thing is is spending time alone with God you know, it's only when we are alone with God that we can drown other things out. That's why God, uh, Jesus said, go into your closet and close the door. Don't be like the Pharisees. Spend time alone with God and let his presence wash over you. Be still and silent. Silence is another thing. We can be so busy praying and telling God what we want that we don't spend time listening in silence, letting his thoughts drop into our mind. And finally, surrendering that time that we've made to him. There is a hymn which says, I surrender all. And along with all the other hymns, you know, all for Jesus, take my life and let it be. There are so many of them. And if God took us at our word, well, I think we'd all be quite shocked. Perhaps we should be praying the prayer and meaning it. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. And when we get ready and we take a few changes in our life, God will come in and make his presence felt. God wants to be intimate with us. The fact that he knows me, the fact that 
it says that I am graven on the palm of his hand, such is his love for me. He knew me, as the psalmist says, before I was born. He loved me before I loved him. And he just asks for that love back. It's knowing that God loves me and is watching over me. This mighty God that made the stars is caring about me. Me, an individual, a unique individual made in his image. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? And so let's just think about that over Lent. Spending more time clearing out our lives, making time, being still and quiet. Jesus went and took himself off, you know, into the desert on several occasions. It was 40 days during Lent and boy did he have a, something to think about at the end of that. But he had got the strength, having spent alone, time alone. And the same can be true for us. Let's give our lives back to him. Let's make this Lent a time of recommitment so that we can truly say that our lives are all for Jesus. That we may get our first love back. God ultimately showed this wonderful love and this care at the cross. And this is what Lent is leading up to. So let's make it a Lent to remember. Amen. Shall we just have a few words of prayer? Our Heavenly Father, too often we push you out. Too often we have let our love wane. It's become lukewarm. Help us to rekindle that flame that we will be on fire for you. That we will be able to radiate the warmth to others that we meet. We pray during this time of Lent that we will use it wisely to spend time getting to know you again. And Lord, we thank you so much that even though you created the universe, that you are mindful of us and that you care for each and every one of us. Amen. And so now we finish with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you once again for listening. I hope you have.